On January 15th this year, the islands of Tonga were hit by a tsunami that caused up to $100 million in damages. The tsunami was caused by a huge eruption of a deep sea volcano called the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai. The deep sea volcano, also known as a submarine volcano, released a force which we only see once in a thousand years. It was felt right across the Pacific, from New Zealand and Australia all the way to the United States and Japan. The Tongo Deep Sea Volcano was estimated to have produced a level 5 eruption. To give you some idea of how big that is, the massive Krakatoa eruption in 1883 was a level 6. The most well-known volcanoes are land-based, which scientists have been able to study closely and monitor. We are less clear about the exact movements behind deep sea volcanoes, however. For good reason, they are so deep below the sea level that it makes analysis very challenging. The deepest known underwater volcano is West Mata, thought to be around 1200 meters below the sea. It lies not far from the Tonga volcano in the South Pacific, between Samoa and Fiji. Deep sea volcanoes make up about 75% of the world's volcanoes. Many of them have breached the sea level and they've formed islands. These range from Iceland to Hawaii all the way down to Indonesia and Fiji. But how are they formed and what makes them erupt? First of all, we would need to get a basic understanding of the Earth's structure. Literally at the center of the Earth is the inner core, made of iron and nickel with temperatures of up to 5000 degrees Celsius. Next is the outer core, which is similarly hot, uh, but comprising of liquid iron and nickel. And now we come to the Earth's mantle, where the volcano process begins. The mantle is almost 3,000 kilometers of hot, molten rock, or magma. Temperatures in the mantle vary depending on its depth, and can reach as high as 3,700 degrees Celsius. The lithosphere forms the solid, outermost layer of the Earth and it's made of the Earth's crust and its upper mantle. The lithosphere is divided into horizontal tectonic plates, both oceanic and continental. Earthquakes and volcanic activity occur when these plates shift, or when they spread or collide. Several factors cause this plate movement, such as gravity, and also the Earth's rotation and radioactive activity within the core. On land, volcanoes are formed when cracks in the Earth's crust allow this magma to pass through. The cracks come when tectonic plates beneath the Earth's surface shift. Now, if two plates meet, the heavier plate is going to sink below the other plate, forming a gap for the lava to flow through. And when it cools, it forms the cone-shaped mountains that we happen to know as volcanoes. In the ocean, however, as you'd imagine, things work a little differently. The first stage is when a gap appears between the plates on the ocean floor. The gap appears when two tectonic plates either collide or spread apart, similar to on land. If two plates collide, the heavier plate is going to sink below the lighter plate, creating a crack. Ocean currents can also cause tectonic plates to separate. When they're pulled away from each other, again, a gap appears. Molten rock, or magma again, <laughs> is released from the Earth's mantle and passes through the cracks in the ocean floor. The magma erupts, filling the cracks and creating a volcano. When the red-hot magma meets the almost freezing seawater, it vaporizes immediately, resulting in what is usually a passive eruption. The enormous pressure from the water also prevents an explosive eruption such as those seen on land. These underwater volcanoes form ridges, similar to mountainous ridges on, again, land. The ridges are known as mid-ocean ridges, and they form a massive volcanic mountain range in the sea. In fact, the mid-ocean ridge system is actually the longest mountain range in the world, spreading some 65,000 kilometers under the sea. Most of this volcanic ridge system remains a mystery, as it's over 2,000 meters below sea level. We know more about the composition of the Moon, or Mars, than we do about the Mid-Ocean Ridge. A famous example is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which was created when two tectonic plates drifted apart. Rising magma erupted to create a massive series of ever-growing volcanoes, which formed the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It stretches over a staggering 16,000 kilometers from Iceland down the Atlantic to, to finish between the southern tips of South America and Africa. Underwater eruptions are widely varied, although we still know very little about the deep sea occurrences. 
Submarine volcanic eruptions can generally be classified into shallow and deep eruptions. As we mentioned earlier, deep sea eruptions are subdued by the immense water pressure above them. This suppresses any noticeable emissions, such as steam, gases, or rocks. So passive are deep sea eruptions that they rarely even register on the ocean surface. Eruptions in more shallow waters are markedly different. They, they can produce huge explosions of steam and gas, as well as showering the sky with debris like basalt and pumice. When the lava hits the water and then immediately cools it down, it can break into rubble and chunks of rock. This debris often makes its way to shore and can begin to transform the landscape. Hawaii's famous black sand beaches in Mau were formed when black lava debris came from an underwater eruption and flowed gently towards the island. As underwater volcanoes continue to erupt passively, they continue to grow slowly, with the added layers of frozen lava being stacked higher and higher. This process takes millions of years and can eventually lead to the island formations. From Iceland to Hawaii and Indonesia, we can see evidence of islands that were once deep sea volcanoes that grew and grew with each new eruption. Once volcanoes grow high enough above the seafloor where the water pressure is less intense, they're capable of explosive eruptions. Volcanoes that remain underwater are vitally important, very often for supporting sea life. Seamounts are basically structures formed from volcanoes that remain beneath the ocean. They're home to some incredible and diverse forms of marine life, ranging from plankton to and coral to crabs, sharks, and dolphins. The Pacific Ocean has the world's largest number of seamounts, with at least 10,000 active structures. Underwater volcanoes that erupt still pose a threat as seen in Tonga this year. Detecting potential eruptions has been problematic for scientists. Steam and ash emissions are clear signs that an eruption has either just occurred or is about to. However, this only provides a reactive response. Earlier signs of possible eruptions are preferable because they can help limit damage from an ensuing earthquake or tsunami such as one that was experienced in Tonga. Recent developments with satellite technology now allow scientists to monitor other signs of volcanic activity like color changes in ocean surface water. If the ocean water suddenly has an increase in, say, iron, the water can change to a yellowish-brownish color. Aluminum is another metal linked to volcanic activity, and it can produce white colorings. As technology continues to develop, we can understand more and more of how deep sea volcanoes function. To understand this cycle helps us to understand how the Earth's crust and mantle intertwine. So, go check out some of the world's most beautiful volcanic islands, why don't you? Maybe Hawaii? Perhaps the South Pacific? Why not Iceland? Come on, travel the world. You know you want to quit your day job and just travel? Woot! And if you did, that'd be your chance to set foot onto something that erupted over a million years ago. That would be, that'd be pretty neat. You could brag so hard. Later.